of the fun things to paint with is your fingers. I love painting with my hands. Not everybody does. But for me, the feel of paint on my fingers and painting with it takes me right back to my childhood. So forgive me for being a bit of a baby about it, but I, I love paint on my hands. So I'm going to use a little bit of this titanium white paint, but it, it's very stark and very, very cold. And I'm going to take ooh, just the smallest amount of yellow. And I'm going to just warm this up. I just want it to be off white. And you can see I'm just making a little circle with my finger. Now, top tip, start out small and grow it a little bit. Don't start out with something this size and then wonder how you can shrink it. So start a little on the small side and you can position it dead center if you want to, or you can position it slightly off center. It's up to you really. I kind of like the slightly off center look to it. And if it sort of skirts the edge of a little tree there, that'd be looking good. I'd put a little dot there. I think that looks about right. And I just start off making a little circle with my finger. And then just take a moment. Yeah, I like it. A little more paint. Again, just painting a little circle with the end of my finger. I don't care if it's not so really hard edged. I like it to be a little bit on the soft side. Let's get rid of some of that paint. And you can just go out a little bit further now and kind of create a little soft glow in the sky. I leave it up to you how intense you want this to be. You may want it brighter than this or more intense. And again, personal feelings on that one. You have whatever you want it to be. I'm going to just play with this a little bit more until I get it where I like it and then I'll come back. Well I finished playing around with my little setting sunshine and I made it a little bit brighter and I just softened the edge of my finger and now I want to start moving into this area here, my painting, into the into the mid-ground as it's called and, and I want to just sort of soften up this edge here. You can see I was I'm kind of loose when I did this, I didn't really do a nice tight edge to it. I've been dry cleaning my brush because I think this painting looks good, maybe a little bit of a mist. So I'm just tapping my brush into a little bit of that white paint. It's not pure white, it's got a little bit of, well, there's a little bit of red on my brush for a start. Let's have a go, let's put in some, some little misty effects here, knock off some more paint. I like that time of day when you see a little bit of mist just at ground level. Oh, somebody's going meow. That sounds like puppy cat. She's just, she's telling me that I haven't given her enough hugs today. Is that right, baby? Not enough hugs? No, she says not enough hugs. I think what she really means is there's not enough, not enough treats. So you can see I just want to build up this misty area here and I don't need to get too high. I want to put some snow on these bushes here. You can see the, the amount of bounce I've got. This isn't just on board, this is on a canvas underneath. So knock off some paint. softens that edge nicely. Now when it comes to adding snow onto these trees and bushes, well just about any brush will do. You could use a one inch brush and you could just tap it on there. You could use a fan brush like this. You could use a fan brush or you could use a filbert brush. And the filbert brush is the one I'm going to use today. And again I'm going to use a little tiny drop of oil. Let me get that into shot. It's a little bit of linseed oil here. Just want to make sure this paint is a little on the soft side and because we've got all these lovely colors above i'm going to make this a little bit just off white peachy white and just jab your brush into it now these brushes if you're using a, a bristle brush they should be fairly strong i just want to get my brush nicely opened up and, and have a little play, have a little, a little try. Just tap. 
remember most of the snow is going to be on the top you're not going to see a lot of snow in the middle of the bush and this is the bright side as I work down I'll let that paint just run out and I'll tap less vigorously yeah that's it again the sunshine the side of this bush is going to be brighter and just kind of paint nice broken edges You've lots of little bits of dark in here and there. Maybe there's more than one little bush in this dark area. Maybe you want to try and paint the outline of two or three little bushes. And again, just as you get down into that into that misty area, just let the paint go off a little bit more. Now, the advantage of using paint that's not pure white for this is that if you want to come back and throw a little sparkler on there, I will brilliant white color you can still do that you've got the options tone that down a little bit and just work your way around slowly can go back in with some with some pure white colors and maybe maybe where you've got a little bit of shadow in the background there you can just come back and just go back and retouch but it gets to feeling good and next thing you know you've done what I call ice the cake and everything's just smothered in white and it's just overdone so a little caution when you're doing this bit don't go putting it everywhere. Just think of where the light could strike. He's in shadow. So you're just going to catch the edges of bushes that are facing the light. See just little bits here and there. And that may be enough. Maybe on the edge of this tree, a couple of branches. Something else I quite often do is I'll put some highlights on a tree and I will stop a little sooner than I think I needed to. It means that later on when I have some more of my painting finished I can look back and see if I need to sneak back in and do another little bit. But I always leave myself the opportunity to go back if I need to. And more often than not, I never bother going back because I like it just the way it is. But I'm going to leave this now and I'm going to start working on putting some of these lovely snowy effects here in the big ground. Okay, for this I will go back to my one inch brush and I've put out a little bit more of my titanium white paint. And this time I'm going to be using my brush flat. Now I pulled my paint out 
it feels a little sticky so I'm going to add a little bit of oil and see what I'm doing with my brush. I'm actually going to slide it along and zoom in a little bit closer for you and skid it forwards and just touch that paint. Okay, most important you see that I'm just trying to make a, imagine I'm sweeping up, I just touch that and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to just load a little bit of snow on here and it's just a very light touch. Touch and lift. And I'm going to just let it kind of find its way up under those bushes. It's a little bright. I'm going to put a little bit of my yellow colour in there. good yeah I like that that's enough that's enough the temptation is to go over it a couple of times and next thing you know well you're back to having a nice big iced cake again so I'm gonna stop just there I want to do these lovely bushes in here I'm gonna mix myself up a burgundy color use my palette knife and I'm gonna pick up that black all of the crimson and hey, let's just throw that red in as well and I'm just going to turn this over and red and black tend to make sort of burgundy colors so lovely sort of rich deep purplish kind of tones okay so I've mixed myself up this nice sort of burgundy brown color it's got a little bit of a, a purpley brown tone to it which is perfect and it will be just nice for my painting for this section I'm going to be using a fan brush and I'm going to go through my paint my brush on both sides and this you've got to be a little bit kind of loose with your brushwork here because what we want to do is introduce the idea that there's there's lots of vegetation on the bank here which has become sort of overload overloaded with sort of um, snow so I'm going to just start off with just some little pressing strokes so just to kind of get a little feel for this and kind of tough on the poor old brush at this stage but you see I'm just going to bend these bristles up and you don't need a lot of paint for this. You can get some nice effects just by stabbing with the brush. And, and let the brush just kind of break apart. Yeah. This is going to cast a reflection down in the water here. So some of what you're doing is going to end up getting into the edge of the water. And that's absolutely fine. I'm just going to start off by kind of creating this, this river bank and it doesn't have to be straight, you can have a little curve to it, that's absolutely fine. So this is really just practice. Okay. And there's not too much paint underneath here so I'm not running into trouble picking up a lot of white paint. I get any further I'm going to drag down my first layer of reflections and see how that looks so I pick myself up a nice clean dry one inch brush and I'm just going to grab that last little tiny bit of color they put on there the very very last little tiny piece and I'm going to just grab some and just deliberately pull that down 
I create the illusion now. If you've got a little bit of a bush here, it's a little bit bigger. I might just pull a little bit more down and then shorten it up where we only have short bushes. So this should be sort of kind of mirroring what's happening above a little bit. Pull down a few more times there. Now I just want to create the first sort of layer of reflections here. I'm going to be adding bigger bushes and things and some trees and all kind of doodads and things up here. So I'm not going to be brushing across yet. I'm just pulling down to start the process off. Again, good practice just to see how it goes. Now, if you kind of want to close the sides in a little bit more here, you can get a little more kind of adventurous with the brushwork at the sides. And something kind of nice about darkening the edges and leaving the center light. And we'll drop in a little waterline there, but I'm not going to brush across yet, not just yet. So hold yourself back. So I'm loading my fan brush again, and this time I'm going to do something with a little bit more size and a little bit more height to it. And again, but it's that same pushing stroke. Just stab, stab the brush in, and let the bristles do the work for you. It'll make you fantastic little shapes. A little bit more paint. Yeah, that's it. Now something that size is definitely going to need a bigger reflection. So not too much paint on brush. Just knock a little bit of the surplus out and, and just try and get something here. That's similar sort of size. You don't have to overdo it in terms of paint. So just the rough sort of size of it and maybe there's another a little bit of vegetation here we'll put some snow on these two to make them fit the scene nicely and a little bit of paint down in here so you're just mirroring one for the other Next, I'm going to put a nice little tree through here and then I'm going to put some nice snow through this. And the snow fixes a lot of problems as well. If you think there are any, we can put snow across it. <laughs> 